Hey, it's Ruth Stern, and today's video is on how to end suffering. I know this is a very big topic, but I'm going to give you a new vantage point or a different vantage point of how to look at suffering and give you one or two concrete ex things that you can already do to start the process of ending suffering. So we are suffering when we get worried, stressed, angry, irritable, depressed. Those are examples of states of suffering. But often we say things like, I'm stressed. And in reality, if you peeled stress away, you're actually in a state of suffering. But here's the good news. Most of our suffering, all of us, are things from outside of ourselves or conditions outside of ourselves. So I'll give you some examples. Conditions of loss. Let's say you um, have an argument with your partner or your friend and you feel a loss of love or respect. That's a loss. Or maybe you procrastinated on a project and you lost out on an opportunity. That suffering that you feel in those examples are putting power into those conditions. I'm giving power to the person who argued with me or power to my own mistake and now I'm thinking it's, it's a terrible loss. So we're in doing a lot of interpretation and negativity around something that happens outside of ourselves or even within and we're making an assumption this is all bad because we lost out on something. Some other examples are if you're in the habit of saying never, I'll never be happy, I'll never be the person I want to be, I'll never get that promotion. The attitude of the, uh, maybe you've had a pattern of some things happen and you've decided it's never going to happen because all these other things weren't in place. Another condition. So all of those are examples of putting so much power into something outside of yourself and therefore and then staying in that negative state and feeling suffering. So the good news is there is a way out of that and the way out of that is to start taking control of the way you think about things and to move into what um, I listened to a uh, spiritual teacher, I forget his name right now, I think his name was Christian G and he was talking about learning how to become in a beautiful state or the Hicks group would call it uh, the flowing state, the vortex. So a beautiful state is when you're in a state of joy, gratitude, love, curiosity, creativity, giving, sharing and in this wonderful state is where you can create a new way of being and thinking. So our goal is to move from suffering to a beautiful state. You know, um, remember in from the Buddhist, they say that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Meaning that, yes, bad things will happen, outside conditions will happen, but we always, always have the option to suffer or not. And this is crucial. So how do we do that? Well, one of my favorite ways to overcome suffering is to get into the highest state. And that's what the beautiful state is, is, your, is living in your highest self or your essence or your highest wisdom. There's many ways to call, call it. So one of the things that you can do is you're going to um, get into what I call a quiet meditative state and you can connect with your true essence. Now your true essence may be, you may have a visual for it. It may be a picture of a, a person you know that you admire, or it may be a, a light, or it can be anything, or you don't even have to have a picture. You can just have a sense of who that highest version of you is. That's the part you wanna connect with. Because if you're suffering, you're not connecting with your highest self, you're connecting with your stressful state and you will never get the best answers in that place. So you get quiet, you close your eyes, and you connect with this highest wisdom. And you just imagine that you're gonna have a conversation. And then you ask the question, I'm feeling worried, or I have some fear, whatever it is, how, and you ask this question, how can I see this differently, or how can I see it in a way that will give me more peace? And then you just wait. Wait for the answer to come from that deeper, deeper part of you. That's where all creativity happens, where new ideas happen, 
where your best decisions will happen. And just start practicing it. You may not get it right away, but it's a beautiful meditative state to get in and to get better answers. Now the answers that you get will cause you to feel less suffering because you'll get a better answer. So for example, that friend who argued with you and you were convinced that they were angry at you, how many times does that happen and you found out it wasn't even true? Your higher state may come up with, when you ask the question, how can I see this differently? Your higher state may say, you don't know that. What are some other reasons this person is acting this way? And then you would answer, well, it could be this, it could be this. And whatever your response is, is now opening up your mind. Instead of thinking the worst thing, you're now coming up with new answers, new understandings. And that's the beginning of you ending, ending your suffering. Bottom line is, you have to make a decision. I will not suffer anymore. No more. Because life is too short and we give so much power to these conditions when in reality there are many choices that we have in how we look at the condition or how we remove ourselves from the condition. So I use a mantra, I am 100% unstoppable and nothing will get in my way of happiness. To make a decision that my life deserves to be in a constant state, a beautiful state of flow and love and connection. And when you make that decision, you will always return to that place. Marianne Williamson calls it return to love. You could call it return to the flow. So as you do just that one simple exercise, you will begin to loosen up on the suffering and come up with new ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving and you will suffer less. And we all deserve that. So until next time, wishing you great joy, abundance, and end suffering.